Today we were talking about King Tutankhamun, commonly called King Tut. I thought you'd be interested in seeing a song that was written for him. This was videotaped back during his reign. So you can see uh, how that worked out. Alright. I'd like to talk seriously just for a moment. One of the great art exhibits ever to tour in the United States is the Treasures of Tutankhamun, or King Tut. But I think it's a national disgrace the way we have commercialized it with trinkets and toys, t-shirts and posters. And about three months ago I was up in the woods and I wrote a song. I tried to use the ancient modalities and melodies. We'd like to do it for you right now. Maybe we can all learn something. <laughs> Now when there was a young man, he never fought in sea. People stand in line to see the boy king. How would you get so funky? Did you do the funky? Now if I know that line of fit to see, I've taken all my money and bought me a museum. There is with a donkey. He's my favorite monkey. Uh, Steve Martin in his earlier days when he was a comedian. I did like his hairy chest, though, I guess. Uh, that just sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ever say anything like that again. <laughs> okay, so let's go on from Tut in our notes. <laughs> The next pharaoh following Tutankhamun was I. So uh, it seems to me like the evidence points to it as his murderer, and then, and then followed by his co-conspirator Horam Heb. I only was there for only ruled for four years. He was old at the time that the conspiracy took place. Horam Heb then, uh, I think, was an assistant of I in this, at least according to James Patterson in his book. Uh, so he, he begins the 19th dynasty, a, a new family coming in. Uh, this son then is Ramses uh, the first. Oh, I forgot. Uh, before we leave uh, Ormhead, uh, it's well. It, I don't know if it's during his years or somewhere in that dynasty at least. Uh, has, there's been found a, a, a story of uh, two brothers, 
uh, which is a story very similar to Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Uh, so it, it may be that the story about Joseph was told generation after generation until finally somebody wrote it down. I'm not sure, but it is pretty similar. Either that or somebody just had a good imagination to come up with the same scenario. Okay, we come to Ramses the first then. Uh, the only thing to say about him that he was a renowned general. Uh, so he was good in the military area. Uh, Seti the first, the only thing to say about him is that he did lead a campaign into northern Palestine, or northern uh, Israel, or north of Israel. Then we come to the next guy who's uh, really of any importance at all, and that's Ramses II. Ramses II was the last powerful pharaoh. Following him, Egypt starts to go downhill. He ruled for 67 years. A topographical list has been found from his reign, which mentions, mentions Shasu, which we've said before, seems to indicate the Israelites or, or possibly a, the larger group of maybe Amorites. Also has the name Yaakov El, which would be Jacob slash El, uh, El being the abbreviation for Elohim. It has the name Asher, which is one of the tribes of Israel. And the name Yahweh. It says Yahweh of the land of the Shasu. So the, that name is there. Um, he is famous for his battle at Kadesh, Kadesh, and I'll tell you about more about that in a minute. And as a result of that, he signed the first recorded peace treaty in history. This is a battle with the Hittites. Uh, before I tell you about that, I want to show you some uh, uh, some statues of. Ramses II. He put statues of himself all over the place. Uh, this is a statue of Ramses II in Memphis. Now Memphis at one time had been the capital in ancient Egypt. Now uh, this area uh, has a bunch of statues of different pharaohs. Uh, there's one of Hatshepsut up there um, and there are others around. Uh, it's outdoors, most of it. And uh, in front of different items there are these little boxes with a sign telling what it is, but uh, it's not kept. Uh, uh, if you, I don't know if you can even tell in the sign, in the corners, there's a bunch of sand in there. Uh, some, some of the signs, we had to brush away the sand to be able to read it. So it's kind of odd. You've got these ancient artifacts, these big statues, and they don't seem to take care of it. This was early in our trip before we understood how things uh, happened in Egypt. And so while we were looking at the statue of an Arab, you know, dressed in his uh, normal costume, came up and asked if we would like for him to take a picture of us in front of the statue. Now in this country that happens all the time, right? Uh, even last Sunday uh, we were in a restaurant with my mother uh, celebrating her 92nd birthday uh, with my sister and uh, brother and nephew and my wife. And we asked the server to take a picture. No problem. They did that all the time. You know, I've been lots of places like Niagara Falls or uh, Mount Rushmore, and you know, people will be trying to take a picture. And you know, very often myself or I see other people or, or off, they offer to me, would, would like me to take a picture. You know, you've probably seen that. Maybe you've done that for people too. So I thought that's just he's just a nice guy going to take our picture. No, 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 no. They don't do anything out of courtesy. After he takes the picture, he wants money. And so, I felt obligated to give him something. Uh, I wasn't really very good at making the exchange in American money to Egyptian money. And so, I just guessed and gave him some. And I thought later, I gave him way too much money. And especially when we looked at the pictures and found that he had cut off either our heads or the head of the statue. Took a couple pictures with Finjis anyhow. So that's what that's what it's like there. All right, so there's one statue of Ramses II. On that site, there's also another one that is laying down. Uh, it was really tall, and you can see the legs are broken off, so it couldn't stand up. So you've got a laying in in a building here. You can see the, the staff is broken off, but uh, that was really a huge statue at the time. Here's another picture of it from 
of the area up above would be down on it. Can you see this guy down here? Why is he there? He wants you to pay him because he's in your picture. Yeah, he'll come up to you and say, oh, you took a picture of me. Well, I didn't ask you to be in the picture, <laughs> but that happened all the time. Could it work? No, I didn't give him anything. Well, in fact, I, I didn't tell you this back at the, remember the Temple of Hatshepsut, where they had the statues of Hatshepsut outside, the building looking like Pharaoh, the arms crossed like this. So my wife was going to take a picture of me there. And so this guy comes up to me and suggests to me putting my arms like that too. Okay, that was a good suggestion. And then he stood beside me because he's going to be in the picture too. And then afterwards he wanted me to pay him because he was there helping me. What? But yes. I did no. So, but that's it's all over the place. Any little thing that they can do to try to get money out of you, and it's not that they're trying to sell you stuff. We learned after a while, don't even look people in the eye. You know, here it would be rude. If somebody come up and said, "Hey, we'd like to buy something," we usually say something back like, "No, no thanks, I'm not really interested." But they, but if you do that, they they just stay with you. Uh, our guy told us you just have to ignore them. He said, in one place we were walking through an outdoor shopping area. Like, there were like tents set up or booths set up along each side, and uh, all of them were trying to sell stuff. He said, don't even look them in the eye when you walk through, and for sure don't enter into any of their shops. If you enter one of their shops, you will come out with something. You will buy something. In other words, you, you can't get it, you can't get away. So you just rush right through without looking at them. You feel, you feel badly doing that, but uh, you have to when you're in that area. All right, here's a closer view of Ramsey's the second head. You can see the cartouche here with his name in it. Here's the, the necklace, the pharaoh necklace that he's wearing. Is that the guy in the back? In the, in the back there? <laughs> yeah, 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 I didn't even notice that. I guess that's him. <laughs> Let's show you how big that hand is. There's my hand in comparison with this. So, huge statue. I don't know how tall it would be if it was standing. Yeah, forks that made out of it. Um, I'm not sure if it's granite. I, that, that's the first thing in my mind. I'm not sure if that's what it is or not. Yes? How long were you in Egypt? I think it was about a week. Uh, Ramsey's statues are everywhere. Here's another site, the Temple of Luxor, and his statues of Ramses II are at the gateway, one on each side. Uh, we, were, we were just driving along the road in Egypt, going from place to place, and every once in a while, oh, there's a huge statue. Oh, oh that's Ramses II again. You know, he just had them everywhere. Uh, really humble guy. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little, look a little bit of at the Battle of Kadesh, which was against the Hittites. Here's All right, seniors, it. your turn to head to the Meteor and for pictures. All seniors, thank you. I'll give you a brief overview of the battle. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and this is north of Israel. Uh, here the Hittites were hiding behind this hill in Kadesh while Pharaoh came up. And he was, he, because he made the mistake of not sending out uh, cavalry ahead of time to spy out where everybody was. Uh, he didn't have good information. He thought that the, the Hittites were mostly down here. So he has two forces down in this area and only one up here. He divided all of his army into three. So they come out from behind the hill in their chariots. They just cross this little creek and now they're attacking Pharaoh here uh, and uh, he's backed up and uh, almost lost his life. If it wasn't for, uh, let's see, well here, here you can see uh, the Hittites attacking you, and they're backing up. Uh, a, uh, the Amaru people uh, lived in that area, and it was really kind of over them that they were fighting, uh, because this had all been under Egypt's authority, and the Hittites came in and took over some areas, including the city of the Amaru. And so the king of the Amaru showed up, <clears throat> and really saved Pharaoh from getting killed uh, and kind of held the Hittites back until the other Egyptian 
forces could get up there. And uh, they finally arrived and they fought a battle. The Hittites retreated. So uh, Ramses II claimed this as a victory, although in reality no one really uh, defeated the other. I mean, they, they didn't totally defeat them at all. Uh, but as I said before, they did uh, come up with a treaty. This is the first peace treaty in history that we know of. Uh, and not only did they agree not to fight each other, but also if anybody attacked either one of them, the other would come to their aid. So that's uh, a pretty good agreement. Now, Ramses the second has uh, all kinds of information written down about how, how great he was in battle and all this. Or, uh, or, but but the, they, they weren't ultimately successful. You can tell by what he writes uh, in his account here. Uh, he, he, really, he doesn't blame himself. He blames his troops. Listen to what he says. Not one of my princes, of my chief men, and my great was with me. Not a captain, not a knight. I think you must be talking about that first part when the Hittites were attacking me. For my warriors and chariots had left me to my fate. Not one was there to take his part in fight. Here I stand, all alone. There is no one at my side. My warriors and chariots appeared, have deserted me. None heard. My voice went to the cravens. I, their king, for succor cried. But I find that Ammon's grace is better far to me than a million fighting men and 10,000 chariots be. So he gave praise to Ammon for his success, not his army. <laughs> all right. Any questions then about Ramses II? That's all we have to say about him. All right. Uh, following him uh, is Ammon Messes. Uh, not much to say about him except that um, he was old when he became Pharaoh himself because his father, Ramses II, lived so long. And Ramses II ruled for 67 years. So by the time uh, uh, Amen Messes came uh, to the throne, uh, he was old himself, so he didn't rule for a really long time. Uh, then we come to uh, Seti II, Sipta, Queen Tusret, Setnakste. And there's not much to say about any of those. Uh, things are going downhill in Egypt. They're, they're losing power, losing control, uh, become uh, weaker and weaker as you go along. So finally get to Ramses III. And Ramses III uh, was able to regain some power. He's the, he's the last of the mighty rulers of the new kingdom. It's not been going well, and he's kind of the last gasp of Egyptian rule. Uh, he has one battle that for which he, he is famous, uh, and that is he was able to repulse a group of people called the Sea People. Uh, this is a drawing that someone's made of the Egyptians fighting off the people arriving in boats from the sea. And they were able to shove them back, even though they looked like this. <laughs> they were tough looking guys. And from what I've read about their Helmets and shields and everything. This looks like it's a pretty accurate uh, description of them. Okay, so who were these sea people? Where they come from? Weren't yeah. they like? Weren't they like the Philistines too? They yeah. Them pretty yeah. Nice to yeah. Very good. How'd you know that? I read the book. All right. Good job. Yeah, they would be. They, these are the people we call the Philistines. All right. So now, how they get to Israel? Well, first of all, where they from? Where did they come? We're not sure exactly. Uh, people used to say they came from Crete, but I don't think that that is holding up. In recent years, uh, scholarship seems to think that they lived in Cyprus. But originally, they must have come from up here in Asia Minor. Some say here, or some say here, or even up into Europe, and came down. Uh, but it appears from the descriptions that uh, the Sea Peoples, that we later call Philistines, were among the warriors that fought in the Trojan War, as is described by Homer in the Iliad. Uh, so they, they were up in here involved in that. And for reasons we don't know, uh, many of them moved into onto Cyprus. And for a reason we don't know either, they all left Cyprus and were looking for a new home. And so they invaded Egypt with their naval force and were shoved back. Meanwhile, they have a land force coming down this way. And so they ended up finding an area to live in right along the coast here just a little ways from Egypt, 
which is the land of Canaan. Now this happens just as the Israelites have been pushing through uh, the land of Canaan to gain their territory. God told them to drive out the inhabitants, and they have done that to some extent. They have moved from the area between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee, uh, the Jordan River, they've crossed that there, and they're pushing this direction from east to west. Uh, and about that time, the Philistines land, and they start pushing in west to east. And so we have the conflict there between them that we find in the book of Judges and then in the, the books of Samuel as well. Uh, so uh, we find Samson fighting against the Philistines uh, a lot. Uh, later on, Saul, King Saul, the first king, is fighting against the Philistines. And then we have the most famous Philistine of all is who? The lion. So remember that he is among the group of people that originally were, were up in here, invade, tried to invade Egypt, and had to settle for living along here. And they are Hamites, from what I can gather. So they these are dark-skinned people. So the sea people lost against Egypt and ended up settling along the coast. Uh, Ramses the third was assassinated and was replaced by Ramses the fourth, who was replaced by Ramses the fifth, who was replaced by Ramses the sixth, who was replaced by Ramses the seventh, who was replaced by Ramses the eighth, who was replaced by Ramses the ninth, who was replaced by Ramses the tenth, who was replaced by Ramses the eleventh. It's just we're not very creative in their name. <laughs> and then that takes us into the third intermediate period, which is mostly nothing. It is Egypt winding down, Egypt not having any much power at all, uh, less and less. There's one Pharaoh here in the third intermediate period that's mentioned in the Bible. Uh, he's in Dynasty 22. Any Excuse remaining me. seniors who have not gotten their pictures, please go to the media room. Any seniors, thank you. His name is Sheshonk the uh, first. He was actually from a Libyan tribe. So you know your your kingdom is going downhill when you're getting your rulers from other places. Uh, whether he conquered or what, don't know. Um, he became the commander in chief of Egypt and then the king. So he begins another dynasty, um, and he was a strong leader who did reunite Egypt for a time. Uh, and he is mentioned in the Bible, um, and there he's called Shishank, spelled a little differently, S-H-I-S-H-A-K. Uh, and then we have one dynasty after another because they're, they're, they just don't live very long. They get killed, somebody else takes over. Uh, so, you know, dynasty 23, 24, 25. Uh, 25, the 25th dynasty does have a number of people in it. Uh, and then we go to dynasty 26. Uh, in dynasty 26, there's a pharaoh named Nekau the uh, second. In the Bible, he's called Pharaoh Necho, and we'll talk about him later. He's going to be uh, on the scene in Second Kings, so that's quite a bit later. But we'll talk about Necho then uh, and what he did. Uh, and then uh, the rest of that dynasty ends. Necho the second is the second of that dynasty, and uh, we only have six kings altogether, and pretty much Egypt is no longer. A kingdom and, and it's that way for around a hundred years or so before uh, Alexander the Great invades. All right, any questions about what you've looked at today? Hope you found that interesting. Uh, we're going to quiz tomorrow over Egypt, so let's take a little bit of time to look over the material and ask you some questions, and uh, you can. Highlight things in your notes as well. Yes. When people invaded, why didn't they knock down the statues? Like, did they think they were neat too, so they just left them there? Um. Uh, well, I get. You know, when the Greeks invaded, they did. They appreciated Egyptian culture. In fact, th th this is interesting. The Greeks liked the Egyptian culture so much that they took on Egyptian culture. So they called themselves pharaohs. And they built onto, uh, like, uh, uh, the Temple of Karnak, which, I, I don't know if you remember, I'd tell you that, and that's where we saw the columns with the little hieroglyphics and everything, and different pharaohs would build another section onto the temple. Well, some of the Greeks did that, too.
when they came in. So they they tried to become a part of Egyptian culture. So and, and other than the Greeks, I mean it's a long time before I mean the Romans come, but they don't really have a lot of control over the whole country, they have a relationship with the Greeks that are there basically. You think about Cleopatra. And um, then eventually Uh, let's see, I, the next thing I can think of is uh, uh, basically Arabs come in from the east and take over. So today you don't really have native Egyptians <coughs> there. I don't know if there's any living there or not, but it's mostly Arabs. So the whole civilization just died out. Good question. Yeah, and the Arabs didn't care about knocking stuff down, but they just didn't. Maybe the structures are so strong they couldn't. Be well, that's part of it. I mean, you, even you think about the think about Hatshepsut's column, it is so is tall and heavy. Uh, it's been standing there for thousands of years. I doubt if you can push it over. They did take the top off of the Great Pyramid and use that to build stuff, and it was probably gold, which is why. But um, I know in other places when the Arab, when the Muslims have come in, they have destroyed religious things, but. Apparently, the Arabs living there, the Muslims that came into that area, didn't care to do that. Or as extreme. And if there had been things destroyed, we wouldn't know about it because they would be gone. I suppose. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Let's quickly look through your notes here and see what's important. I'll ask you some questions. Let's see if you can answer them without looking. To kind of test your brains a little bit. Uh, during the, we started with the archaic period, and we saw that there was one geographical feature of Egypt that was the most important. What was that? Grace, what's the most important geographic feature of Egypt? Right. The Nile River. You knew that, didn't you? No? Oh. You, you act like you haven't been here. The Nile River. Yes, everybody should know that. Now, uh, the Nile River uh, is the cause of the three seasons. Uh, what are the three seasons? Nate? Um, harvest. Um, Before you can have a harvest, you have to have what? Planting. Planting, yes. And in order to have nice, rich soil in which to plant, with lots of water, it comes from the Nile. What's it called, Riley? Flooding. Flooding. Yeah, flooding, planting, and harvesting. Okay. Uh, Egypt at that time was divided into two sections. What were they, Robbie? Lower Egypt and Lower Egypt. Right. And which direction was Lower Egypt? Haley? Which, what direction is that on the map? Do you know your directions? What is, on a map, usually what is up? Which direction is that? If, some, if someone was telling you how to get to Youngstown from here, and if they said go up, would you know what they you would. <laughs> what direction is that? North. North. Yeah. North is up on the map. All right. So the lower, lower Egypt would be north. Um, the the earliest inhabitants of uh, uh, Africa and including Egypt were descendants of what son of Noah? Lexi, you have a pain to look on your face. Like. Do you have an idea? Ouch. What? Ham is correct. All right. First one we got. The other class had to go through all three sons. Or they got it. Ham. And so that meant they were very dark skinned. Uh, let's see. So we have Upper and Lower Egypt. They were united by whom? Means. Right, means. And what's the other name he took for himself after he did that? Remember? Number. Yes. 
so excited she dropped this. Narmer, right. And let's see. He uh, is the first pharaoh. And during this time, we have writing developing. What is the Egyptian writing called? So the. Are you sure? Be sure. Say it out good and strong. Is that strong? Is that strong if you can say it? Yes. Is that right? Is that, is that a lot of she ever talks? Yes. <laughs> Hieroglyphics, right, or picture writing. Um, does anybody remember the machine they developed for irrigation to get water from one level to another? Oh, Riley? Right. What, what was that again? Oh, it's so close. <laughs> The la I missed the last consonant. Anybody else? Shadoof. There's an F on the end. Shadoof. Did you? Sorry. Sound like it says Shadoof. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was listening to a 50s doo wop. Shadoof. Shadoof. No, Shadoof. Okay. Uh, what did the Egyptians use to make paper? What plant did they use to make paper? Grace. Try again. Yes, papyrus. Right. <laughs> and what was a person called who was a writer on papyrus? Bill. Scribe. Right, scribe. All right, following the United Kingdom, uh, we move into a time where uh, authority is centralized, Polynesians have brought things together, and now there is strong authority uh, for the entire company, and that's called the Old Kingdom period. Uh, during that Old Kingdom period, there is a famous structure, or a type of structure, let's say that first, a type of structure that was built. What was that? Pyramids. The first one was called a step pyramid, and who built the, the first step pyramid? He also was an expert in medicine. Do you remember, Riley? In, in humans, yes, or something like that. something like that. That's very close. Imhotep. There's no way. Imhotep. All right. For whom was Imhotep, Imhotep building that? What pharaoh was he building that? Uh, that step pyramid as a tomb. For what pharaoh? It's kind of a funny name. There's two different ways to spell it. Either Zoser, Z-O-S-E-R, or Zoser, D-J-O-S-E-R. Does that sound familiar? All right, following that, we have the building of the Great Pyramid during this whole kingdom period. Uh, for whom was the Great Pyramid built? What pharaoh? You might remember this from the video. I said it lots of times in the video. Jake? You had your hand up there, didn't you? No. Are you just exercising? Yeah, I think I was wrong. Nobody knows? Poo poo. Oh, yeah. Poo poo. Jake, why didn't you get that? Uh, during the Old Kingdom period, there was another structure built that is famous, still, still around today. Right, the Great Sphinx. And what of uh, what is these? No, let's see. Uh, what? I forgot to ask this. What two beings are pictured in the Sphinx? A lion and a human's head. Right. A lion's body and a human head. Uh, during this time period, we also have developed a way to preserve the bodies of pharaohs. What is that called? Mummification. Right. Mummification. And this I won't ask you this on the quiz, but just to see if anybody remembers. Uh, does anyone recall the name of the vessels in which they put the organs? Canal with doors. Right. Good. <laughs> Following the Old Kingdom period, we enter into what period? First intermediate. First intermediate. And there's a time of civil war, a time of pessimism. Following the first intermediate period, what's next? Middle Kingdom period. And then we have established a social pyramid, firmly established. Who's on top of the social pyramid? And who's under him? 
Priests and nobles, who's under them? Merchants. Merchants, who's under them? Common people, and who's on the bottom? Slaves. Right. Civilization began to flourish in Egypt. A lot of prosperity. We talked about the cause of death. Uh, what person in the Bible is carried into Egypt during this time? Abraham? No. Uh, <laughs> Joseph, I, I say carried into. Uh, Joseph was carried there. Taken there against his will. Joseph. And you know, we all know what happened to Joseph there. He finally gets out of prison where he was falsely, uh, as a result, being falsely accused. Uh, and uh, Pharaoh appoints him to be his what? What position did Joseph Bill have? Why, why are you all deferring to Bill? Because he needs to get along. Right? They don't think I can do it. Okay, Bill? He was in charge of the grains. Yeah, what was his title? Uh, second command. <laughs> 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 All right, Jake, what is it? Vizier. Vizier. Uh, <laughs> Following the Middle Kingdom period, we come to another intermediate period, the second intermediate, and the Pharaoh's power had declined so much that they were invaded by foreign people. What were they called? What did the Egyptians call them? No, no, what did the Egyptians call them? Hyksos. Now, what were they? What what group of people? To what group of people did they belong? Shemites. Well, they were Shemites, or descendants of Shem. More particular than that, they were they were Amorites, which made them, of course, relatives of the Hebrews. Uh, oh, um, what type? Of warfare did the Hyksos bring to Egypt? Right. Following this period of the Hyksos, the second intermediate period, what's the next period we come to? New Kingdom. Okay, I'll look over the pharaohs uh, that were mentioned in Exodus, especially the pharaoh of the Exodus, of course, Hatshepsut. And Ramsey the second, third, we need to know. King Todd a little bit. 